Hi, I'm Gabriella from Postcards from Hawaii, a travel and lifestyle blog, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make your very own crochet pumpkins. This free crochet pattern and tutorial for making pumpkins is super easy and similar to my other crochet tutorial for making chunky beanie hats, which I've linked in the description box below. These crochet pumpkins are a really easy crochet project. You can easily make one of these while watching an episode of the Gilmore Girls or your favorite autumnal movie. These pumpkins are perfect as full decor and can be made little or large. I originally made these as place settings for my first Canadian Friendsgiving dinner and since then I've made them as seasonal cushions too. To make these crochet pumpkins, what you will need is a medium weight chunky yarn or wool in two colors, one for the pumpkin and one for the stem, a five or six millimeter crochet hook, scissors, fiber fill stuffing, a darning needle, and a tape measure. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is measure out the end of the yarn to 20 centimeters or eight inches. And from this point, we're then going to create a slip knot to start our foundation chain. And to do that, we are going to chain 18. When you reach the end of your foundation chain, we are going to start on our first row, and that will be placing a double crochet into the third chain from the hook. Now we're going to continue to put in those double crochets all the way across the rest of this row so you should have 16 stitches when you reach the other end. And when you do reach the other end, your work should look like this. Now to work on our second row, we are going to create a turning chain of two chains, so chain two, and then we're gonna turn our work. And move on to the second row, which will be a double crochet into the back loop only. This creates a ribbing, and the ribbing is essentially gonna be the ridges of our pumpkin. So we're going to put double crochets into the back loop only of every stitch across this row and when you end you will have 16 stitches. So we are basically going to continue this until we have 15 rows. So when you reach the end of the row, you will chain two, turn your work, and work double crochets in the back loop only for the rest of the row until you have 15 rows in total. Now, you can make this any size you want as long as your length is double your width. So you don't have to start with a foundation chain of 18, it could be however long you want or however short you want. But as long as your length is double your width, then you will have the perfect pumpkin shape every time. So continue on with your 15 rows and I will meet you when we've both got to that point. Now, if you are doing your own size, then you always want to end on an odd row. That's because when we close these two ends up, we want to have our tails at either end of the tube so that we can gather the top ends of the pumpkin to seal it up. Uh, so to close this, what we're gonna do is fold it in half lengthways, and then we're going to place slip stitches across the top just to close that up. So fold in half lengthways and pop those slip stitches 
all the way across. And then you'll end up with two open ends, which we will close up with those tails once we have fastened up this end. Place your last slip, slip, slip stitch. Wow, that was as tricky to say as it was tricky to do, apparently. <laughs> um, and now we're just going to fasten this off and make sure that we leave a tail the same like this before, 20 centimeters or 8 inches, so that we can close up that end of the pumpkin. So now we are going to thread one of those tails onto a darning needle and we are going to weave in and out all the way around, pulling it close like a drawstring to fasten up this end. As long as you weave in and out close to the top edge, it really doesn't matter how you do it. You don't want to make it too tight. You don't want to do it too far away. Every couple of rows is fine. Just make sure you pull it tight as you go along so the yarn doesn't snag like halfway through or something like that. Now if you're using a really chunky yarn like I am, you might find that when you pull it taut, it might still have a little bit of a hole that's okay. So we're just going to pass some stitches back and forth just to close up that little hole. Uh, there is no specific way to do this. Just thread from one side to the other until you've closed up that hole. Throw a knot in it to keep it closed and just weave in your ends as much as you want. Don't worry about trimming them though, because we're going to turn this baby inside out. So you're not even going to see that. Once you've turned it in inside out and you've got like a little pumpkin cup, we are going to grab our fiber fill stuffing and we're going to stuff our pumpkin. I like to pull my stuffing apart a little bit because I just find it makes the stuffing go further. Um, yeah, just pads out the pumpkin a little better, means you don't have to use as much. But the amount of stuffing you want to use is entirely up to you. I was just trying to be efficient. Once you feel like you've got enough stuffing, which I didn't, so I'm putting more in. It's time to close this baby up. So as before, just thread onto the thread the yarn onto your darning needle and just do exactly as you did before. Once you've closed up the other end of your pumpkin, spend some time maybe just reshaping it a little bit, making it perfectly round. And now we're gonna move on to the stem. And you're going to do that by measuring out 10 centimeters or 4 inches, just as you did at the start of the pumpkin. Then we're going to put in our slip knot and do our foundation chain. And you're going to chain 8. This length will change depending on how big or small you make your pumpkin. I don't have a formula for that, unfortunately. Sometimes I've made them too long, sometimes I've made them too short, but the beauty of that is pumpkins are pumpkins and not all are the same, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, so we're going to put double crochet into the third chain from the hook just as we did before and we're going to double crochet across the end of our foundation chain and you will end with six stitches. When you reach the end we are going to move on to our second and final row. It's that quick. So we're going to chain two, turn our work, and do double crochets across the row. You do not need to do a back loop only because we're only doing two rows. So double crochet across the rest of this row, all six stitches. Then we are going to fold this in half, just as we did with our pumpkin, how we folded it in half and put slip stitches across the top to close it. That's what we're going to do here. So fold it in half and just pop slip stitches all the way across until you've closed up your stem. And unlike the pumpkin, we don't have to gather any ends. So once you've reached the end, just fasten that off and trim a tail the same length as the other one. You don't have to measure this one, you can just use the other tail. I like to have two tails because it just gives extra stability when you're fastening the stem to the pumpkin. It just, it doesn't make it wobbly. Um, yeah, so we're going to thread one of the tails onto a darning needle. And the way I like to anchor this on is to kind of go through the bottom of the stem and then into the pumpkin. And then we're just going to pass a few stitches back and forth going back into the end of that stem every time because it just it really anchors it down. And then when you feel like you've got enough stitches just tie a knot, move on to the other tail pass a few stitches through, tie a knot, and then I just weave the ends into the stem and trim off the excess. And there you go! You have your crochet pumpkin! Because of the way the stem is made, it kind of makes one end, where you've put the slip stitches, it kind of makes the end very taut, and it means that you can curve your little stem over. If you enjoyed creating these crochet pumpkins, then give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. And if you make these and share these on social media, I would love it if you tagged me because I really want to see what you created. And until next time, thank you.